Thank you. We now turn to our final round of paper speakers. Speaking third in proposition tonight is Lord Sumption. Lord Sumption is a former justice of the UK Supreme Court, and before that, a leading barrister. A fellow of the Royal Historical Society, he is now an author and leading medieval historian. Lord Sumption, it's a great pleasure to have you here tonight. You have Mr. President, let's start by asking ourselves what is the purpose of a constitution? It's a body of rules and practices for collective decision making. Its purpose is to accommodate differences of opinion and interest among citizens so that they can live together in a single political community. Does the US Constitution perform that purpose? The United States is among the most polarized countries in the world. Americans are bitterly divided about issues like abortion, same-sex partnerships, gun control, public health care provision, all of them issues which were settled long ago in other advanced democracies. It isn't the Constitution's fault that they're divided. Other democracies with very different constitutional arrangements are also polarised. But do we see, um, in American institutions, do we see them accommodating these differences? Do we see any functional collective decision-making process at all? Congress is log-jammed with no procedural way out. Filibusters obstruct controversial legislation, even, perhaps especially, when they have substantial majority support. Appointments of justices to the Supreme Court are obstructed by the simple device of the chairman of the Judiciary Committee refusing to schedule the hearings. Disputes within the majority group of the House of Representatives can prevent a speaker being appointed with the result that no business can be conducted at all. Crude blackmail can threaten the government of the richest state in the world with bankruptcy by withholding the revenues necessary to carry on the most basic functions of government. The Supreme Court, it intervenes with interpretations of the Constitution that decide major issues of social policy on which Americans are divided without any democratic input at all. Yes? Has the UK Supreme Court also not chosen major issues which have been rather divisive within the past several years, which have divided this country as issues in the United States to divide America? Uh, yes, it has. Uh, it's changed its position relatively recently, and I applaud that change. But I'm not seeking to defend the British Constitution. I'm seeking to attack the American one. <laughs> Now, because the Constitution is the supreme law of the land in the United States, the decisions of the Supreme Court cannot be reversed by any democratic process. So presidential elections become contests for the right to appoint sufficiently biased justices to the Supreme Court. A president can reshape the Supreme Court in a single presidential term by appointing young justices ideologically committed to his program who will dominate the court for a generation after he leaves office. The president has his own personal mandate independent of the wishes of the legislature with which he can stymie the intentions of Congress. During the Trump presidency, the US president faced impeachment proceedings for conducting US foreign policy in the personal interests of himself and his associates. His attorney general refused to enforce congressional subpoenas designed to hold him to account. Several dozen public offices were kept vacant, the work being done by worthless jobsworths uh, in order to avoid congressional scrutiny of the, of the appointment. Statutory bodies like the Environmental Protection Agency were emasculated by appointing senior official as senior officials flat earthers who thought that climate change uh, was a hoax. Now, these things uh, are not caused by the American Constitution, but the American Constitution has proved incapable of dealing with them. What has gone wrong? Well, I will tell you what's gone wrong. The US Constitution is uniquely dependent on a shared political culture to make it work. There has to be a bipartisan determination to make the system work. There has to be a common belief that uh, among all political factions, 
uh, that making it work is more important than getting their own way. It ceases to function when politics are so polarized that the shared political culture is no longer there. Yet that is precisely the time uh, when a functioning constitution is most needed. The famous system of checks and balances is not now. Uh, the famous system of checks and balances is supposed to work by giving independent power to the three great organs of state, executive, judiciary, and legislature. But when the shared determination to make the system work collapses, as it has done in the, since the 1990s, the three branches become into perpetual conflict. The result is not the dispersal of power, uh, but its complete logjam. The US Constitution is uniquely vulnerable to this problem. Now, these are not just new problems associated with the age of Donald Trump. Uh, they have happened before, in the build-up to the Civil War during the 1850s, in the 1930s, when Roosevelt's New Deal uh, nearly broke down uh, during the war between Congress and the Supreme Court. It is very difficult uh, for the United States to deal with these problems because the Constitution is uniquely rigid. In most democracies, there's a safety valve, but not in the United States, not without the approval of two-thirds of Congress and two-thirds of the states. Save in exceptional periods, for example, the period after the Civil War, when the southern states had not yet been readmitted to Congress, it is almost impossible to amend the US Constitution in the face of any significant body of opposition. The other source of rigidity is the Supreme Court. When the Supreme Court has a political agenda, as it has had at several points in its history, it can significantly distort the way that American democracy works. The result is usually to entrench highly conservative vested interests. For half a century before World War II, the Supreme Court consistently obstructed attempts to enact basic measures of employee protection legislation. For nearly a century after the civil wars, uh, it obstructed attempts to improve the civil rights of black people, for example, by desegregating schools. In Citizens United, the Supreme Court in the United States has decided that all attempts to limit spending on election campaigns by corporations are unconstitutional, which means that rich companies, pressure groups, and millionaires can buy their way to huge and disproportionate influence. And because that is now a rule of the United States Constitution, it cannot be changed until the end of time unless the Supreme Court one day changes its mind. In successive decisions, the Supreme Court has stymied every attempt by democratic state legislatures to control the acquisition of guns. That is the law of the United States until the crack of doom. And meanwhile, gunmen shoot up children in schools, people in churches and synagogues and clubs. Now that's not a functioning constitution. It works well in good times, but it is hopeless in challenging times. But the good times are becoming rarer. America is entering what seems likely to be a long period of relative decline in which her post-war dominance of the world's economy is unlikely to survive. That is unleashing fearful economic and social problems to which the United States cannot adapt as other Western democracies have adapted. I would not wish to live under such a constitution. Would you?